Hey, it's Adam Mills, Mills Ammunition. So glad you're here today. So um, when we started our company, Mills Ammunition, we could have named it anything, right? So think of all the, the small ammunition companies that are out there um, there and, and how many names are someone's last name. So putting your last name on a box is, is, is kind of gutsy, dude, to be honest with you. And sometimes it's really great and sometimes it's not so great. Um, my heart and soul is in this business. My family is in this business. Every cent I have is in this business. So when we go to a show or we get feedback that, God, your army ammunition is the greatest ever. It is such an incredible feeling. It is so awesome. And it's why we keep doing it. When one person can say, hey, man, your stuff's terrible. It didn't run. Da -da 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 -da. It tears your heart. And that's just kind of part of the business. It's just part of it, but it does suck. So the problem is, is most of the times, um, it can be the gun's fault. Uh, it doesn't have to be the ammunition's fault, but through someone's experience level, their knowledge level, or maybe even their rudeness, um, they don't understand. A lot of times, most of the time, it is the gun's fault, right? So as long as you have a bullet like this, this is one of ours, and it case gauges, right? It's got a, a primer that's set in there properly. The length is within SAMI standards. That's the organization that sets standards for, for bullets. If the length is the way it's supposed to be, it's crimped correctly, and it case gauges. So that's a gauge that you put the bullet in there to make sure that it will go in pistols chambers. If all those are good, um, everything should be good to go. You should not have any problems. So here's what I'll tell you. We use EGW case gauges. Most manufacturers do. They're super, super tight. So we know that our ammunition is going to chamber. Now, one difference for us is we build a competition training round. So our rounds are built for competition, of a minor power factor, explain that or uh, look that up or I don't know. But here's the thing is, it's a lower velocity. And so you uh, might have to have a different recoil spring or more of a broken in gun. When you get a new gun like this one here, this is an m and M2.0 uh, competitor. When you buy this gun, it's empty. When you buy this gun, what I always recommend folks is, is lock that slide back for two weeks of minimum or or um eight, or four weeks and run some really hot stuff in it so this is rem i was going to make some hot stuff but it is what it is so this is remington umc 147 grain it is a 147 grain bullet it's moving at about 990 feet per second that's a power factor of uh what are we looking up 145 something like that yeah, right around there or so yeah so it's a fairly fairly hot or hot round that's the stuff you want to run in there uh, initially, maybe 100 rounds, 200 rounds, pistol break-ins are a real thing. So, um, otherwise, if you put a lighter load in there, you might not, the gun might not cycle. So I had a, uh, customer who I know, uh, said, Hey man, I ran your stuff. I, it, it wouldn't run. It was jamming. Um, so I am blessed that I was able to call him and say, Hey man, let's go check it out. So he's got four rounds left. Um, of that box, so he shot the 46. But I have the exact same from the same batch. We do very, very small batch runs. So this box here is from the exact same batch that was made. So what we're gonna do, he's got four left, there's two guns. We're gonna fire two rounds in each one and just see see if it goes bang and see if it'll cycle for us. Uh, so that's the first thing. Cool, hope you understand. We've got our lab radar ready to rip. Um, so that's gonna tell us our feet per second. We've got this awesome, ransom rest uh this is their steady multi-cal steady rest i'm telling you if you uh are starting to get into guns get a rest uh, it will help you figure out what ammunition is running worth the darn and what is not like we just shot this and it was uh, way off and to the the right for, and this is not my gun so but anyway i think that'll get us caught up so let's rip we'll, we'll take his four that he had left over We'll load them up in this magazine, and we'll see if uh, two will, I don't have my speed loader, but we'll see if we can get two to, to cycle. We're shooting at 15 yards. It cycled. Right 
So no problem there. It's a good thing. And again, after he had these said problems, he said he ran a bunch more ammo. Um, and that might have been enough to, to do the job. So this is a Glock uh, 47. Both cycles. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I think what we found out here uh, is exactly kind of what we thought was that if you um, get a new gun, um, you've got to put some rounds through it. Uh, your recoil spring in there needs to be broken in. So this guy, don't doubt him, right? So, and we, we even have that video, I'll send it to you, but um, they weren't running for him, right? So they would fire off the first round and then from there, um, they wouldn't cycle for him. So mm. um, I think what happened is, is he went and he shot a bunch more and now it's running like a champ. So we'll put, um, we'll put 10 through each one and uh, we'll see how it goes, see if they all fire. So I think they will. All right. <laughs> Let me go get my speed loader. So we've got our M and P M 2.0 competitor, hollow sun, uh, red dot honor, uh, 10 rounds. We're just going to run through it. See how she runs. Make sure she goes bang 10 times. Same batch of ammo that this feller had some problems with. So we'll rip through it and we'll see if we have those same issues or if we're good to go. They all went bang, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no issues, right? So let's, uh, we'll go to the next one. This is the, the Glock G47. And uh, we'll go try this. Let's do this. You know this one's acting up a little bit. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Let's rip. We've got these 147s. They're pretty freaking hot. Nine, 10, 11, 17. So that's good. Magazine took all 17. We'll load it in there. We've got 17 in there. We'll pop this bad boy off for 18. All right, so now, put that down. We're gonna get a new group going. Say on the box that we're getting 990 feet per second. Out of the 147. So let's see how close that is to reality. So we got 18 to go here. Let's see what it does.
18. So let's see. So it says it's running at 990. I think it was pretty much on that. So let's see what it tells us. 10.06, 1006. Highest was 10.39, lowest was 9.83. Standard deviation was 18. That's kind of high to be honest with you. Extreme spread of 56. So, all right. We'll we'll load a, we'll load like three of the 115s of ours again and we'll see if it makes any difference. Uh, and that's really what it needs is you either need to change change the recoil spring on it or just get it much more broken in to fire a lighter um, to fire a lighter around. Let's see. Yep, that's what it is. It's just not gonna. It just needs a lighter round or a lighter recoil spring. But if we run it. If we go back here, we'll load this thing all the way up to the max. So this is 17. We'll put 18 in this thing. So the ammunition you were shooting before was heavier than... Heavier, right? So these are 115s. That I'm, that's ours. Yeah. Um, and that was 147s. Ah, okay. So when you take the velocity of the bullet multiplied um, by the weight of the bullet, you'll get a power factor. And that power factor is just a, a number that helps you identify how much recoil force is, is, um, is, is happening in your gun. And it's, it's used to keep competition uh, equal, right? So someone can't have a really weak firing bullet that they can easily keep on, um, keep on the paper and be more accurate with faster, uh, more recoil, uh, you, you're not gonna be able to be as fast, right? Accurate's not the thing, but you, you're not gonna be as fast. Competitions are obviously about speed. So uh, the best calculation uh, to figure out really what's going on is what's called FRE, free recoil energy. Why is that a better calculation? Because free recoil energy calculation, which you can find on Sammy's website, takes into consideration the weight of the gun and also the weight of the charges, right? So it's a much more in-depth calculation uh, because if I had a real heavy gun versus a real light gun, the recoil force is gonna be very, very different. So, all right, so we've got 18, I believe. Maybe we don't. Let's see if we can't put one more in there. But let's see if we can get 18 rounds through it without having a malfunction. That's it. All the way through. Yeah. So it's just, it's all there is to it, dude. It's just, it's just a recoil. It's just a spring. All right. So what do you do, right? Well, there's a couple things you can do. Um, you can uh, continue to break your gun in, right? With, with heavier rounds and leave that recoil spring uh, tuned back or any of these guns, Glocks, m and there's tons of different weighted recoil springs. I've got an incredible video about how to tune your, your semi-automatic with recoil springs. We'll, we'll put that in the link down there. Really what you want is to be outside in an environment like this and you want your spent cases to go to about six to eight feet to your, to your right. So um, when that is occurring, you've got the right recoil spring uh, for the ammunition that you're shooting. So. Hope that helps. Uh, awesome. Thanks so much for watching.